Now, West African defense chiefs have, at the end of their two-day meeting in Ghana, agreed on a date to intervene militarily in the Niger Republic to restore constitutional order in the West African country after a military coup in July that ousted President Mohamed Bazoum. The ECOWAS troops have pledged their readiness to participate in a standby force that will restore democracy in the uh, country uh, should diplomatic efforts to reverse the coup fail. Heads of state of the sub-regional bloc had earlier ordered the activation and deployment of a standby force to Niger. And in line with this resolution, ECOWAS defense chiefs uh, met in Ghana to finalize the deployment strategies and have now agreed on a specific date, but which they didn't make public. Now, ECOWAS Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security, Abdul Fatal Musa, confirmed the development at the close of the security meeting. He added that the sub-regional bloc is, however, still seeking to dialogue with Niger military leaders. And I quote him, we are ready to go any time the order is given. The day is also uh, the D-Day is also decided. We've already agreed and fine-tuned what will be required for the intervention. As we speak, we are still ready in a mediation mission into the country, so we have not shut any door. Let no one be in doubt that if everything else fails, the valiant forces of West Africa, both the military and the civilian components, are ready to answer to the call of duty. Uh, and uh, that quote, once again, is by Abdul Fatal Musa, who is the ECOWAS Commissioner for Political Affairs. Well, presidential guards had in a coup on July 26, uh, overthrown President Bazoum and dissolved the constitution. The ECOWAS decision to explore military options in the Niger Republic has generated a lot of reactions with many interest groups, including the African Union, AU, kicking against it and suing for caution. Well... To help us understand these issues, I have joining me in the studio now an international counterterrorism and organized crime specialist, David Otto. Otto is an active consultant, trainer, and capacity builder uh, who has been especially for NATO, UN, and uh, other terrorist, and, uh, count, uh, terrorist network and counterterrorism uh, meetings and trainings that he has held uh, to help guide people. Thank you so much, Otto, for joining us. Thank you very much for having yes. me. Yes, and uh, let's talk about this meeting now despite all the pleas, yeah. despite all the uh, religious leaders, including traditional rulers, and then, of course, West African elders, all meeting. It looks like ECOWAS is bent on going ahead with this uh, war to reverse the trend in Niger. A date has been fixed. What do you make of that? Uh, we cannot really press the red button yet. Um, I, I do understand that the um, chiefs of defense staff, you know, they have a defense role to play. Um, you know, they've made their statements, you know, quite clear. But again, those statements are a little bit controversial. Um, they say that uh, they, they, they are waiting for the order any time, uh, which means a day has not been fixed. Because, you know, when they say they're waiting for an order, it means that order is going to come from... Um, yeah, there has know, to be uh, the yes. right person who will actually yes. uh, give the order. Yes, so uh, it has to come possibly from the um, uh, ECOWAS heads of states. Um, so it means that um, they cannot say the date has been fixed and, and at the same time that, you know, uh, they are waiting for an order. But at the same time, saying that, you know, they want to um, give dialogue a chance, um, it's almost as if um, they've decided to invade, which means um, they are not giving dialogue a chance or they've decided to give dialogue a chance um, in anticipation that invasion is a last resort. It, it therefore means if at that point uh, they would have to then decide on um, at what time they, they will invade. But it's not as simple as, as they put it. Um, if you want to carry out a military intervention into a country like Niger, with all the circumstances that we know, um, the kind of support that Niger has been able to garner, um, the kind of um, condemnations, um, the African Union has also made it quite clear that um, it is not in line with a military intervention uh, at this point in time. Um, so I don't see um, the ECOWAS carrying out any military intervention unless, um, uh, you know, um, all 
um, avenues for dialogue fields. As we speak, um, ECOWAS is, uh, has sent some emissaries, you know, to, to talk in the Nigeria public. Yeah, but the um, problem I have with all of this, David, is that there's been contradicting statements. How could you on one band say that, look, we are ready to strike, yes. uh, and then the other, on the other hand, you're saying that, look, there's still room for mediation and all of that. It yes, looks I'm, like the mediation is having the upper hand. Of course, mediation is having <laughs> an upper hand. I think the, the, the issue here has been, you know, initially ECOWAS had issued that ultimatum which, in my opinion, it shouldn't have, you know, at that point in time. Now ECOWAS has to find a way to, um, you know, retract um, and give dialogue a chance, which is what, you know, should have been done in the first place. But, of course, they have to show um, that a military intervention is a strong deterrence. Um, but th there are no signs or indications on the ground uh, in terms of preparation, war plans, um, movements, uh, to have any indication that uh, we would see boots on ground um, very soon in Niger. I mean, also, uh, we, we still do not understand what legal, um, uh, you know, uh, some kind of a, a legal instrument that ECOWAS would use. We know that the UN um, Charter Article 2.4, um, you know, would not apply because it's not self-defense and an authorization on the Article um, 53.1 has not been issued by the UN. So that area will not work. Uh, so secondly, in other words, also, there must be that approval. Is there that must what you're be an saying? approval, or there is what you call an ad hoc invitation by a government, uh, by the government of Niger. Um, we know that uh, President Bazoum, you know, had made statements regarding to, to the fact that he needed help, um, but we are not very sure if that can be classed as an invitation for intervention. Because he's uh, no because longer of course in power. He's no longer in power. He doesn't have control <laughs> in power. But so, of course, those who are in power are illegitimate. Yes, so, and, and the constitution no longer holds. So therefore, ECOWAS cannot, you know, possibly um, say that it is using an invitation to, to intervene uh, in that sense. The only instrument which I think ECOWAS could use legally um, is the 1999 Togo-Lume um, uh, Agreement, which clearly stated um, that in, in the event of maybe to prevent uh, conflict prevention, conflict management, um, conflict resolution and peacekeeping, ECOWAS could actually intervene under Article 25. Um, to uh, kind of what they call anticipated invitation. Um, but um, from a military point of view, anticipated invitation would work within 24 to 12 hours when that coup is already is taking place, when there are no guarantees that it will succeed. That is when an anticipated intervention would work. But because that window is passed, um, they have to carry out a full-blown war, which, of course, has its um, uh, you know, regional implications. And so I don't know what uh, legal instrument that ECOWAS <laughs> is going to use. And, and as a challenge, uh, yeah. I want to ask you, uh, David, uh, do you, in your own um, thinking, believe that President Bazoum can still be returned to power with the way the ECOWAS uh, heads of government have been talking? And if he is by chance brought back to power, isn't going to uh, create a sort of insurgency by maybe a wing of the military against him, and then the country could be destabilized for so long? Well, the, the thing about democracy is that you need uh, the support of the people. Now, it's difficult for one to say how much support Bazoum does have now. But from you know, a point of you know, just looking at what is going on in the Niger Republic, it does appear, uh, and I use that you know, intentionally does mm. appear President Bazoum does not have the support of the people any longer. Um, now, it could also be because, you know, um, the military, you know, Junta, of course, is, is using repressive tactics, you know, to clamp down on any uh, pro Bazoum uh, protesters. But at this point in time, I think, you know, that ship may have sailed um, already. Uh, President Bazoum is, um, uh, it's, a, it's a bit more of a history at this point in time. So I'm not sure that we would have any reinstatement of President Bazoum. What but I that's think what ECOWAS wants. Yes, so that's, that's what, what ECOWAS, they are saying, that's that ECOWAS wishes. President Bazoum yes. has to be reinstated. That's and how ECOWAS, feasible is of that? Of course, ECOWAS does wish that, but uh, I don't think that is feasible at this point in time. Um, what is feasible um, and practical would be for perhaps, you know, the ECOWAS to agree for the military junta to leave power at the shortest possible time hand over to a transitional government, have a democratically um, elected election process uh, in place, and do not stand or for any of the elections as a candidate. That would be what I think ECOWAS could. Hasn't the government, uh, the military government, started that process? We've seen them appointing a prime minister, and we've seen them appointing a cabinet, and including regional governors. Doesn't it suggest that that's a more of a transitional government? That's what it does suggest. And, and that is why it makes it very difficult, even for ECOWAS to carry out a military intervention now. Because my, my 
I'm presuming that ECOWAS is preparing for a battle in Niger or Niamey, um, you know, to storm the presidential palace. Um, they don't know where Bazoum is. They think they do. Um, and reinstate Bazoum. That's more or less a battle. But I think the Nigerians are preparing for a war. And we have seen um, elements and signs of, you know, uh, mobilization of the population. We've seen signs of Niger making strategic uh, partnership with uh, countries like Burkina Faso, um, Guinea, countries Mali, like Mali. Yeah. Um, and the arriving talks of um, Wagner forces, uh, allegedly, um, coming into um, Niger Republic to support the junta. So I don't think uh, at this point in time it would be a regional disaster if ECOWAS does go ahead with a military intervention. Because, of course, there is no guarantee um, that President Bazoum will be reinstated, as ECOWAS believes. There is no guarantee that this is going to be a short war. More or less, we might be facing what we're facing in Ukraine. Um, you know, um, we might be facing the same situation in Libya and p perhaps the same situation in Syria put together. We don't want that in the continent. <laughs> Which is what a lot of people say, yes. that the region cannot even afford. It, it can't afford. Uh, because, um, I mean, West Africa is too poor to be able to afford such a war. Uh, but let's go back to this meeting in Accra yes. uh, with these uh, defense chiefs and all of that. I mean, it was supposed to have been held last weekend yes. and then it was uh, uh, shifted. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, let's talk about how quickly ECOWAS can actually put together a standby force made up of both the military and civilian component to be able to go into uh, this uh, intervention you're talking about. Uh, yes. Do we have the capacity to quickly form like 5,000 troops like it's been suggested? Which of the countries do you think will be producing a huge number of the troops? Mm. And do we have all the war equipment and which of the countries within mm. West Africa will be producing or providing more of those uh, war armaments if we are to well, go Well, in, in terms of, uh, um, uh, you know, um, the, the readiness of ECOWAS, um, I think ECOWAS does have uh, the capacity to produce even 7,000 or 8,000 troops. Um, Nigeria would, would take the, um, you know, the majority of that because, of course, you know, Nigeria is the, um, the, the biggest of the lot out of the 15 member states. We know four, four or five member states will not um, get themselves involved in, in any uh, military intervention in Niger. So, yes, we, we do have um, the knowledge that ECOWAS does have the capacity to put, put along those troops. Um, but, the, but the issue there is um, we are not very sure if ECOWAS does have the resources um, financial resources for any military intervention. It would then mean um, that they have to rely on some external partners, maybe the European Union, um, maybe other, the US or other countries that are keen uh, to see ECOWAS have a standby force. This is what should have already been done. We, we, ECOWAS needs to have a standby force. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why I think, in hindsight, ECOWAS will be thinking we made a big error. We should have had a standby force. And the, 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 the role of the standby force is to intervene in an event, which when I mentioned the, um, the, the Lome agreement, is to intervene in an event that there is a sign of a military coup in a member state. That would be what we call the anticipated invitation. But at this point in time, if ECOWAS does intervene, it is too late. Uh, to go into Niger. Yeah, I mean, people Niger have been is already saying prepared. <laughs> um, it, is not, it is no longer an anticipated in invitation. Um, but capacity-wise, they do have it. Um, are they going to achieve the mission? I'm not sure. Um, and who is going to pay for it? Um, I don't think the member states have that resources. So they will have to be supplied from the West. And we would pay that, you know, using is, our mineral isn't, resources. Isn't Nigeria not going to take the lead when it comes well, to bringing the, the money? Is because of main there's been pressure on President Bolatin would not to put Nigeria into a war because of the cultural affinity with Niger and all of that. And then, of course, we don't have the resources to prosecute a war and take the leadership that you talked about. Nigeria has always war. been the biggest contributor of ECOWAS. Yes, you know, but, but at this point in yeah. time, people say that's not the priority. And of course, you would need the Senate approval, which doesn't seem to be forthcoming. And of course, most Nigerians are not supporting that too. Yes. But talk to us about the plan by the Nigerian military junta to actually prosecute uh, President Bazoum, who's being held hostage. Uh, the U.S. has warned against that. The U.N. also warned against that. ECOWAS, I mean, you needed to read that statement, <laughs> how angry they yes. were. And they kept saying that that may also halt the mediation efforts that's ongoing. What do you make of that uh, decision to try him? Well, you see, war is a statecraft, and um, it, it therefore means that there's a lot of propaganda being you know, uh, drafted in. Uh, Niger Republic understands that President Bazoum is their insurance policy, especially the military junta. They know that by holding President Bazoum, they can do 
they can guarantee that you know they can go through the transition of uh, you know governance they can hold power for some time and ECOWAS will be very careful any other country will be very careful to intervene knowing fully well uh, that the mission is to reinstate Bazoum but they don't have an idea of where President Bazoum is so President Bazoum is it's an insurance policy for the military junta. When they say um, that they are prosecuting him for treason, of course, they have control over his telephone calls. They know who he speaks to, what he says to them. They deliberately gave him a telephone to make sure that they can understand his communications. And, and of course, you know, we haven't seen any evidence. The junta hasn't provided any evidence to suggest uh, that President Bazoum you know, should be tried for, for treason. But we know that President Bazoum wrote uh, an op-ed um, you know, talking yeah, about I read, I yes, read the yes, where he was uh, very for, insistent yes. uh, on uh, you know getting support yes. to actually uh, remove the military government. Yes, so but power. I don't know how the military government wants to charge him on that basis when they had dissolved the constitution, um, they had suspended the parliament. So at that point in time, I don't think there was any law. Um, that prohibited him if they want to um, go by what they've done themselves. So there is no um, possibility of a legal uh, you know, um, ground for them to charge him for treason. But this is not new in, in Niger. Um, you know, they, um, they've had not, this is not the first coup. Um, they've yeah, prosecuted previous they've, yes, they've prosecuted previous leaders. You know, the, using the military um, tribunal. So it's it's not impossible. But I think the key here um, is that the military understands that in any event, um, you know, um, of a successful intervention, it will come from within. So they are trying to suppress any um, resistance movement, you know, that would come up for pro Bazoum, and this is why they are sending out that message that anyone who um, including Bazoum, because they didn't just mention Bazoum in, in when they talked about the treasonable offences. So they're trying to block that route because they know very well that you know the soft underbelly is resistance from within. Yeah, if and we've fails, also seen uh, this group uh, uh, being set up by a former minister, a rebel group, yes. trying to say that their major aim is to reinstate Bazoum yes. and all of that. That's so what that message crush. is also to them. Yes, that okay. message is directly to them to crush any movements you know within the country. So. Again, it's all about statecraft. Uh, the military junta understands the game. They've seen the reaction of um, ECOWAS in countries like Mali, Burkina Faso, in Guinea. And what they're doing is they're learning from these um, processes. Um, but I think what is more important um, at this point in time is that ECOWAS should continue to pursue um, the dialogue Mediation. route. Okay. Um, that, that boat has sailed um, in terms of a military intervention. It is not in the advantage of um, any country, including Niger, including Nigeria, um, which carries the burden because, of course, um, His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has the chairmanship. Um, you know, there is no appetite for a military intervention. It will not be supported well, in any It looks like states. the Western powers are pushing uh, our leaders, including President uh, Tinubu, because we've seen the U.S. Uh, Vice President speak with him. I mean, some of the officials for like three times. I mean, this is uh, someone they never wanted to associate with because of the controversies over the election. Uh, and, this is and now they are just giving him calls every now and then, checking him, checking up on uh, President Tinubu, how he's doing and how he's handling the NIJ uh, issue. Uh, how do you you think that President Tunubu can better manage this for his own good, the good of his own government, and then of course to ensure that there's an amicable resolution? I think this there's issue. one. There's so one, as not to be seen as a Western problem. Yes, there's one thing that President uh, Bula Tunubu should learn from the, the West. Their interest must come first. The interest of Nigeria must come first, even before the interest of ECOWAS. Um, when it comes to other ECOWAS member states, their interest must come. I do not see um, any military interest that Nigeria is going to gain. Uh, from invading uh, Niger through ECOWAS. I don't see any advantage uh, Nigeria is going to get, but I can tell you that the West w has an advantage because, of course, one, it will sell the weapons to ECOWAS. Um, it will have access to uh, mineral resources. It will have access to a military base in Niger. It will have access to uranium. And, of course, it would have access to um, you know, the, 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 the geopolitical fight between uh, maybe the, the West and the East. Um, well, with all so, you've said, it looks yes. like the West will eventually be the winner, and, and, and not and, even ECOWAS or Nigeria. And that, that's why it's important, uh, you know, for ECOWAS to shield their swords. Um, you know, there is no advantage. Yeah, and the AU doesn't seem to be supporting ECOWAS. And I kept wondering what exactly is going on. Uh, if the AU is not supporting ECOWAS, then why is ECOWAS so insistent on going to war? Would it be that these Western leaders are actually uh, insisting that President Tinubu and the ECOWAS leaders must do their bidding? Well, I think, you know, the role of the UN is to, sorry, the, uh, the African Union is to, um, you know, supervise what the regional bodies like ECOWAS are doing. So the African Union will not 
intervene at this point in time because but ECOWAS... But shouldn't they be having some sort of moral situation? Yes, they... Support of course. for such an, an agenda to restore a democratic government? Well, the African Union failed in its 2063 um, uh, um, silencing agenda. of the guns, um, which, of course, uh, if you look at the entire continent, um, it hasn't really worked. Um, so they're trying to subcontract uh, responsibility to regional bodies like ECOWAS. And recently, the African Union has made it quite clear that a military intervention should not be the priority. I think ECOWAS must listen to that. Um, but talking again back to uh, the, the job of the chiefs of defense staff, these are military men. They are not politicians. So when you bring them on the table, they will talk to you about military <laughs> about intervention. About bombs and guns. About bombs and guns. But <laughs> in right. reality, what we have... Uh, is a situation where um, we shouldn't try the hard way. We should try the dialogue. Okay. Just before I let you go, um, David, I'm curious to know why former president, uh, 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 former head of state, military head of state, uh, Buhari, who is very close to former uh, President Bazoum, if we may call him that way, or President Bazoum, has not said anything at all, considering how former president Buhari has been close to former president Yusufu, of Niger and then even President Bazoum, I thought that he would take some steps to ensure that he's at the heart of these negotiations alongside the incumbent Nigerian president. But I haven't heard anything from my uh, former president. Uh, I'll give you the simple Buhari. reason why. Why? Um, you know, th there, is a, there is an unsigned agreement between governments. When a president leaves power, um, you know, the president just left in May um, uh, 29th, is it? Um, you know, yeah, yes, uh, that's May, where that was May 29. Where 29. That was the handover. When the president leaves power, you don't want them to be speaking on issues of national security. Isn't or this issues a critical of, issue or, uh, or, you know, sending the information to the back door or just some sort of statement to actually calm freight nerves between both countries? We haven't heard yes, so much so from him. We, we haven't heard that publicly because, you know, he will not speak publicly. I mean, this is something which even other countries out of, uh, of Africa practice. You don't hear presidents who have just left power speak publicly on issues of national security. But what we may um, be experiencing is that, you know, um, the former president could be speaking um, in the background uh, and talking to, um, you know, uh, President uh, Bulami Tinubu and also perhaps um, bringing in other people to see how dialogue could be the way forward. But we would not... Could it be used we, as we, an envoy we, to the no, military I don't think so. I, I, don't think, I don't think it would be used as an envoy. Again, because, you know, uh, as a former president, you, you want to keep him in the background. Um, sentiments of what he is good, uh, you know, and he's bad and his mistakes, you know, you don't want to bring them to, to the fore. Um, he's gone. Um, let him speak to his predecessors in the background. And, um, but the, the current president has the ability to make the right decision for Nigeria and for the continent. Well, I was just um, having that thought, considering how, uh, you know, <laughs> the politics within Nigeria yes. was when uh, President, uh, former President uh, Buhari had said that he was going to build a railway to Niger. Uh, you know, he was always going there. And he even named some streets uh, yes. in Abuja here for former President Isufu, including uh, President Bazoum and all of that. So I yes. thought that it would be a key factor. But it's good to uh, have you explaining all of this uh, so that we'll have an understanding that there could actually be some backroom yes, of channel course. of communication with President Tunubu. Yes. And I think that would be very helpful if uh, uh, former President uh, Buhari continues to provide some sort of backroom support for President Tunubu on this crucial issue uh, because it looks like ECOWAS is still hell-bent on going on this war uh, despite all the pleas from Nigerians, including the parliament of the country, rejecting it and all of that. But that's how it's been on this edition of this week. I uh, we must thank you so much for joining us to help us understand uh, some of these issues, David auto and of course our viewers well it's on this note that i want to thank our viewers for uh joining us to watch this program i'm somna sambo see you next time